Hi, this is Michael Dennis. Welcome to my tutorial uh, uh, continuing with the Zach, Zach Wild scale system. This will be key of G, eight note patterns, uh, guitar tutorial. So um, this will be the, uh, the last thing that I have planned with, this, uh, with these, this series I've been doing of all the different keys and the Zach Wild uh, scale system and other kind of three note scale, uh, scale systems. So um, with, uh, with all these videos, as I've said before, I have some things planned out, and then I also have things that I just kind of let happen because music oftentimes uh, in the moment will, will change. So look for uh, two PDFs uh, linked in the description. So the one will be uh, Zach Wild Scale System Key of G. That will give you just the eight different patterns that I'm working from. And then there'll also be uh, a PDF uh, Zach Wild Scale System Key of G eight note patterns. So there'll be uh, two sheets with that. So I'll just uh, start off, I'll, I'll just play through the first diagram there. Uh, so what I'm suggesting here is that this, uh, the notes around this pattern, B, D, E, G, is kind of like an E minor seventh chord. So I'll be addressing that as I, um, as I do that. There's also other videos that I've done uh, on eight note patterns, both chromatic and diatonic. So I think uh, uh, what I'll do is I'll just start off, I'll play through that first, the first line of patterns. So you have, uh, I'll just, and I won't say the note names, I'll just play everything downstrokes. So this is kind of something I've been doing lately in my own practicing, is playing a lot of downstrokes. A lot of the old jazz players you see play a lot of downstrokes, and I just thought it was an interesting way of practicing. So uh, just reading across that first line. <laughs> So the idea here is I was trying to come up with kind of improvising patterns for myself where I can do quick eighth notes and then and then it would land on one of the chord tones. All right, so that's the, that's the first line played, played like that. So then you could use this, you know, in a like kind of a chord melody style. So so what I'll do here is I'll uh, play each of the measures, and then I'll end off with some chord voicing that uh, that's around uh, that note. So so what ends up happening is if you, if you start on the B, you end on the E. If you start on the D, you end on the G. If you start on the E, you end on the B, and then if you start on the G, you end on the D. So, so this is just one particular spin on this, um, and then I thought maybe later I can look at some different ways of taking these six-note patterns, hexatonic patterns, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so the first measure leads into E minor, so E minor, E minor seven. Okay, next pattern. How about? Or, I, or you also, this is sort of interesting too to take a G, a, a G major chord, and then just hit the hit the low E with that. So, okay, third measure, E minor seven. Okay, then fourth measure. All right. So that's that's all I'll do with that with that first line. Okay, second line. So what I'm saying here. That, that's the pattern based on uh, the, the, the top two strings of the, the second diagram there, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A. So the outer notes, F sharp, A, C, E, are the notes of an F sharp minor 7 flat 5 uh, triad. So I'll, um, I'll play through the line uh, with all downstrokes. And now what I'll do is I'll play each measure and then I'll end it with whatever voicing I think I like uh, on each of those notes. Okay, so the first measure, I'll do this A minor, F sharp minor seven flat five. Okay, next one, F sharp minor seven flat five. Next one, typical F sharp minor seven flat five chord. And last one. So, so what I'm doing there 
is I'm landing on F sharp minor seven. There's no fifth in there, so I can just let me just drop in the the flatted fifth there. So kind of an unusual voicing there. Okay, uh, going on to the third diagram. So here, this is coming out of this part. D. So I'm saying that those outer notes here, G, B, D, F sharp, are the notes of a G major seventh chord. So you can use these melodic fragments to kind of go around the, the, the different chords. Okay, so once again, uh, third diagram. Um, I'll just play through um, th that line, all down strokes. Okay, so the only kind of devil in the detail here, when we're landing on the G, there's not really a good major seventh voicing. I mean, that's not too bad there. So you do F sharp, B, D, G. Some people like that sound. I, I have a hard time using that. Maybe if you bar it across. You, you can make a, a case for that. I, I, it's, not a, it's not a sound that I can really use comfortably so usually what i'll do is i'll just either play just a regular g chord like a standard g chord or i'll do what's called the g69 either like that so as a, as an ending chord so that would be more a little bit more typical okay so i'll play each of the measures and i'll follow it with one of these voicings of g major g major seventh okay for the first measure six nine next one G major seven. Next one. Typical G major seventh. And then here. So you have a couple of choices here. G B uh, G B F sharp. Or this is a voicing I like a lot. G D B F sharp. So yeah. So uh, like I've stated a lot of times in these videos, I'm really giving you very, very raw materials most of the time, and then it's up to your imagination to, to figure out what to do with that. So let's say I wanted to do... Um, okay, or, uh, and then I want to end here. Okay, so that's just kind of one... Uh, Kind of brief, um, brief example. Uh, see if there's anything else I want to do with that. I guess not. So let's go on to the, the fourth diagram. So that's going to be that one right there. Okay. So I'll just read across. Uh, I'll read across the line there. Uh, the fourth diagram. So those outer notes there, A, C, E, G, R, A minor seventh chord. So I'm a big fan of, of, you know, using the guitar to its advantage, especially these open strings. So I, I like to change keys. Um, let's see, like Blue Train, I play like A minor seven. Uh, Blue Boss, I like to play an E minor because of the open strings and, and so on. Um, I think where I got that idea many years ago, I used to go to the, the uh, library and look at old downbeat magazines and soundboard and all these different you know books and magazines that were available in the music library. And I remember uh, seeing an old downbeat of uh, a transcription of a Wes Montgomery solo of Misty. And okay, normally Misty's done at E flat. I'm pretty sure, if my memory serves me correctly, Wes played Misty in G major. So once I saw that, I was like, okay, if Wes Montgomery is changing the keys then I could start changing keys, and then I start changing keys for, for different songs that I was doing um, uh, chord melodies for. All right, so I'll do the same thing here. I'll, I'll, I'll play through the, uh, each measure, and then I'll end with some kind of A minor 7 voicing. Next one. So there's your typical A, E, G, C. Or I'm also a really big fan of these pentatonic voicings, you know, coming from the pentatonic scale. So if I'm here... Next one. Okay, and then. So, so there, I'm, I'm just going to uh, default to this uh, 
with, without adding. So I, I could also add that E note there. Okay, I think what I'll do here, um, I'll put the drum jam on. I just have the drum jam, gatam and bass tabla. I like this drum jam. Um, it's a, it's just a way of, of giving me some kind of rhythm uh, to, to play off of. So I'll just kind of mess with, with with some of these. I'll play some so a, a minor voicings uh, and and you know mess with these um, with these patterns um, rhythmically and and so on so on and so forth. <laughs> I think that's all I'm going to do with that one uh, for for right now. Let me think if I want to do something else here. Yeah, I think what I'll do, I'll do next before I go on to the to this uh, page four, I'll talk about some of these other notes that I have here. Um, uh, let, let's maybe take um, let's say this one right here and and add some hammer-on pull-offs. So um, so the idea that I'm going to do here is um, is I'm going to try to play hammer pull-offs where I'm only playing one pick, pick stroke per measure. So if I do the first one, see that? So, so that's the first measure there of the fourth diagram. Hammers, hammer. So that gives you a, a lot to do with articulation. So if I add in this A. And then you can change it rhythmically. Okay, then here, all right, so you have the, the second measure. All right, that gives you a lot, a lot to do with, with hammer, uh, hammer pull-offs. Uh, the third measure. All right, and then you might find it helpful to, rather than doing everything even, maybe just do a little break. Or do uh, legatos and then pick. So it gives you a lot, lot more options there. And then the uh, fourth measure. Okay, that, so that's a pretty that's a pretty convenient one uh, to do that on doing the different uh, rhythmic uh, rhythmic groupings. Okay, I think what I'll do next is I'll just go on now to the. Uh, what I'm calling page four. So now I'm, I'm out of this diagram here. So, so the note up at the top, so the F sharp A, B, D, that's a B minor seventh chord, B, D. So, so the whole strategy of this is if you do these eight note groupings um, that I came up with, you're always gonna be landing on one of the, on one of the chord tones. And then, it, and then the speed and fluency, that just comes with practicing. So I, I don't like to stress that a lot in these videos because that's up to each individual person um, what, you know, how, how much they want to practice this to get it, to get it uh, uh, fluid. Okay, so I'll, I'll go ahead, downstrokes, I'll play through that uh, fifth diagram. Okay, so now I'll add in some uh, basic chord voicings. Uh, again. Okay, second line, uh, second measure. All right, so that's, an that's another way to, to finger that B minor seven chord. So you can finger it discrete fingering, or you can bar here one. Remember I had a hard time learning that one. But that's a, that's a good voice. Or you can do the um, you can do that uh, uh, 
pe- pentatonic voicing. Uh, third measure. Again on that one. All right, and then once again, don't feel like you have to play these even. Uh, the only reason I write them out even is just it's just a convenient way of giving the information that that's the, that's the the pitch set. Okay, and then the fourth measure. All right, there's that there's that minor seventh voicing without the fifth. Okay. And then you can do, or if you want to get, I'll throw on one of those. Uh, uh, Johnny Smith, uh, Van Epps voice. I guess it's Johnny Smith. That's that's a really I, I really like those a lot. So that's B D F sharp A. So. And then you can do the same thing here. G E C A. Yeah. So notice, I'm, I'm, you know, lately I've been sitting in classical style, uh, mostly because of the kind of material I've been covering. You know, has a lot of stretches. So I thought that that, that would be an easier, easier way to do it. So yeah, maybe I'll put the drum jam back on and I'll kind of mess with these. So I'll, I'll, I'll combine uh, this pattern here, landing on a A minor seventh chord, and then this one, uh, landing on the. E minor seven. So, so this, this I, I didn't plan to do this, but when I when I stumbled upon that chord, that's just such a nice, that's just such a nice sounding chord. A little hard to finger. Okay, let's just let's see what uh, what happens here. Okay, I think that's all I'll do with uh, with that one there. Okay, so let's go on to now, um, I guess, the, the sixth diagram. Okay, so what I'm saying here is the outer notes of the pattern are related to, uh, are the notes of a C major seventh chord, C, E, G, B. Okay. Okay, so once again, you have the issue of uh, when you do... When you land on the C note, you can do C chord, you can do that same C major sevens with the with the E and B, or I, I prefer to do the, the, the six nine. So uh, first measure, C six nine, a second measure. That's just your standard C major seventh chord, a third measure. On uh, C major seven, or you can also land on C sixth. Work good, and then uh, last one. So you have this C E B, or you have that stretched out voicing C G E B. Okay. All right, and then for in, in terms of speed, what I'm finding for myself is is just to kind of start slow and steady and then maybe do some repetitions where you're gradually speeding up. Uh, sometimes it's also helpful to use like a pick that has maybe a little bit more of a point on it like the Ernie Ball Prodigy. Yeah, so what I'll do here, I'll just kind of do, uh, I'll put the drum jam on and I'll just kind of play the different patterns and I'll just kind of play kind of slow and then faster and then I'll just kind of push my technique a little bit so this isn't necessarily going to be totally clean but I'll just kind of show you how you can just maybe gradually work on your speed so so this this uh, drum jam is about metronome 88 
hammer pull outs. Okay, so you get the I, I idea with that one. Uh, so let's see, that's going to be... Okay, so now the next diagram... I'll switch back to the, the other pick. Okay, so now we have seventh diagram coming out of ABC. Okay, so I'll just read across uh, that seventh diagram. So, uh, so that that particular pattern I'm saying has A C D F sharp. So that's um, D seven D seven arpeggio. Okay. Uh, so I'll do the same thing I have been doing. I'll play a measure and then I'll end off with some kind of standard uh, D seventh or D nine voicing. I'll just do that in the top four strings. The next one. Then there's just kind of typical D7 voicing. Next one. Right, I, I kind of like this voicing a lot. D, C, F sharp, A. I'll do that again. And last one. All right, so here you have kind of the same thing. You have D, F sharp, C, or you also have the voicing I have been doing, D, A, F sharp, C, where you're muting the fourth string. I'll do that again. Yeah, so notice how I, I didn't play every single single note cleanly. So that's just something that you have to be your kind of like your own teacher. When you're sitting around practicing, you gotta decide, am I playing clean? Did I miss it? And then so, so different there's different issues people talk about inside, outside picking, and that's just something that you'll have to kind of you know just work on your own. Yeah, I guess when I was first developing this system of these eighth notes, that was kind of my my thinking, working on my technique. I, I wanted to have sort of the same feel in in all the different directions. Whether I was going, whether I was starting, you know, one, two, three, on whatever string I was on, I wanted to have the same uh, the same feel in the hand. Okay, so that was Disa. Uh, okay, so let me do, I guess, one more for today. Let me think if there's anything else I wanted to, to do here. Yeah, uh, when I was, uh, last night, I, I was, when I was sort of thinking about this video, it, it kind of occurred to me it might be interesting to play some different kind of melodic cells. So, so I'll, maybe I'll come back to that. I'll just go through this uh, last diagram here, eighth diagram. So that's like an E minor, E minor seventh chord, E, G, B, D. So uh, I'll go ahead and play through. And I'll go ahead, since I have an open string, I'll just go ahead and, and let that low E ring through. So I'll just play, I'll let the low E ring, and then I'll play through that line. I'll do the same thing and I'll add in just a, a simple voicing here. All right, just typical E, e minor seventh. Next one. That, that, that's, kind of, that's, almost, that's almost like a G chord, but with the E, it kind of sounds like that. Or you can add maybe that, that note. That's kind of interesting. Okay, uh, next one. That's again E minor seventh chord. So it's like an E, so it's like a G triad with the E in the bass. And last one. Let that low E and then E G. E, G D. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about these um, uh, melodic cells. So I thought it would be interesting. Um, let me just take one of these. Yeah, let me take this one here. And, and, and another idea I wanted to talk about was, like, if you take this... Um, the fifth diagram. So the notes you're landing on are B, D, F sharp, A. So if you think G 
major seventh chord, then you have third, fifth, seven, nine. So that so that's that's an interest. So you can take all those patterns and then end on a on a G major seven chord. But what I want to do here, I'm gonna I'm gonna go off on a little bit of a tangent. So this isn't written out here, but I thought you know, last night as I was thinking about this, well, let, how about to do one, two, three, four, five, six note melodic cells from from these various p patterns. So, so, so this would take a, a lot of time to do this, but you might find that it just kind of gives you a little bit more melodic material. So if I had my G major seven chord, two notes, three notes, Four notes, five notes, not so good because of the C. Six notes, All right? Yeah. So what I'm doing here is I'm mostly doing eight notes, but 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 you can you use this for uh, you're creating different kind of melodic cells. Okay. So now I'm gonna do the same thing backwards. So yeah. So I'm thinking G major seven chord, and I'm just gonna play one, two, three uh, notes out of that each out of that particular pattern. So. See, that, that one's really distant. I've talked about that before. That's the avoid note. Uh, okay, so, yeah, so I got it off my friend. So D, D, two notes. That needs to resolve. Three notes. Four notes. That's kind of major, major nine. Uh, five notes, and then six notes. Yeah. So uh, I don't want to go into a big long tangent on that, but but if you thought about that, you could take each of these, each of those patterns. You know, and, and, and play that. So maybe I'll do uh, maybe one more of those. So how about now I'm going to use the C major seven pattern. You know, okay, but I'm going to use it over A minor seven. So what's going to happen here is I'll have um, so for A minor seven I'll have C uh, of the flat third, the fifth, flat seven, and the nine. So that's that's pretty pretty interesting. So and, and also I, I can let my low A ring so. So, the, so one, two, three, four, five, six note melodic cells. I, when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about tetrachords. I've talked about that a lot. There's a uh, Dr. William Fowler, a really interesting uh, uh, thing. Maybe I can li link that below also, uh, talking about uh, t tetrachords. Um, all right. uh, okay, I think that's all I'm going to do for uh, sort of the theory part of this. So, um, you know, the idea is to, you know, Take you know basic scale shapes and then kind of move them around, manipulate them, and use them to create um, different kind of um, melodic ideas for yourself. So for the uh, for the ending on improvisation, I'm gonna uh, use an up tempo modal. This is from uh, Blues and Jazz Master Tracks from uh, Steve Houghton and Tom Warrington. And I'm just going to use an overdriven sound. So I'm going to have to just uh, kind of repatch my uh, gu guitar briefly uh, to do this. Let me do that now. Okay. 
right. So this would be like an over overdriven sound, a line six uh, pod. I think this is like a California, you know, like a like a Mesa boogie kind of sound. So I'll just be improvising over this. I'll use some of these ideas, and then I'll use some you know some triads, some minor pentatonic, um, and you know, and things like that. So um, thank you for watching and listening, and I. And my intention is to give you some value, some some different ways of of, of thinking about uh, about things uh, uh, as a guitar player.